This is the Risk Reconnaissance Podcast, where we discuss all things government and defense contracting, from business development, risk, insurance, and compliance. Thank you for joining. Hello, this is Brian Smith with Risk Reconnaissance Podcast. It's going to be a series of shows that we're going to have that specifically focus on issues that are confronted by government defense contractors, everything from risk to business operations and compliance. And the reason I put this podcast together was to offer a forum in which it was informative and somewhat entertaining, hopefully, if we can do that with government contracting, and also to give you an opportunity to learn something when you're going to and from work on a podcast. Today, I'm joined by a fine gentleman by the name of Joe Greger. And Joe joins us from Washington, D.C. He's here in our studios in Atlanta. And Joe was in town today to do a presentation for the National Defense Industrial Association, Georgia chapter, where he went over a variety of issues that are confronted by government defense contractors with regards to DCAA audits. So with that in mind, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Joe Greger and have him have a moment to talk a little bit about what he does, what his background is, and we'll take it from there. Joe? Hey, Brian. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, Pleasure to be here. Uh, so I, I started with uh, DCAA back in 2003, so it's been about 17 years or so. Uh, I started off as an auditor, uh, performed various complex audits at large defense contractors, and then from there I, I moved on up to, to, to a supervisor position uh, and then a manager position. And then just last April I rotated into this position. Uh, my, my formal title is the small business uh, program manager, and in that role I serve as the audit uh, expert for small businesses. Uh, I help small businesses understand the different uh, foreign DFAR regulations, and I help them navigate that that space, which can be very challenging at times. Um, and part of my role is to go out uh, uh, and do events such as yours uh, with NDIA, also with PTAC, um, and speak to the di- various different regulations and, and help small business understand what their role is uh, within, within government contracting. And your role in this, you mentioned small business, what is your definition or the definition of DCAA with regard to small business? I mean, are we talking about revenues? Are we talking about people? What are we, what are we looking at? Well, it, it really depends on who you ask. Within DCAA internally, uh, we, we sort of look at contractors um, uh, with, with certain thresholds. So generally speaking, under $50 million of sales, we do consider them small businesses. Uh, 50 to 250 is about a medium size to large size. And then if you're over 250 million in sales, you're, you're generally considered a large company. Fair enough. That's a pretty good measure for us to know today because we are going to go up to companies that are about $250 million in annual sales, and we're going to break it out. Uh, let's go to $100 million, and then we're going to go beyond that to the 250 mark. Um, Joe, you and I had a chance to have a little bit of banter about today's show before we got started, and keeping it within the time frame, because DCAA, correct me if I'm wrong, is pretty complicated. Absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of complex regulations out there. Uh, honestly, there's a lot of it I don't understand. Uh, but, you know, in, in the 17 years that I've been doing this, there's a lot I do know. Um, and that's that's the reason why I'm here is, is I want to sort of impart some of this knowledge to small businesses. And, and in particular for small businesses, they don't have the resources to go out and hire um, uh, program managers and lawyers to understand the regulations. So that's why this role exists. And that's and that's my responsibility is to help those small businesses understand what what they need to do to to be successful government contractors. You must be on the road a lot then. <laughs> I am actually. This is my second trip out of four, uh, and I'll be on the road the next two weeks. Well, I'm really happy to say that Joe is going to be joining us again three more times over the next eleven months, as we're going to have a series here in Georgia with regards to DCAA and what to look for when it comes to audits. And because of that series, we decided to dedicate today's program to a couple of different topics. And the first one, actually, Joe, we talked about this before, and that's monitoring subcontracts. And when you brought this up, it was really the first thing you wanted to bring up. So why don't you tell the audience a bit about that, monitoring subcontracts and how it's going to apply to them? Yeah, so, you know, uh, like I said, over the past year or so, uh, being in this role, I've traveled to a lot of different places. And the one thing I did find, a lot of uh, small businesses and even mid-sized to large companies, they don't understand the responsibilities that they have as a prime contractor uh, when they have uh, smaller subcontractors underneath them. So FAR, uh, FAR uh, 42202E2 actually states that uh, you're responsible for monitoring your subcontracts. 
Um, and that goes really, uh, it really reach, reaches the gambit uh, when you talk about accounting systems or even proposals. Uh, one example would be is, is if you're a business and you, and you want to award a uh, cost reimbursable subcontract, you're actually required to determine whether the subcontract has an adequate accounting system. So that responsibility falls on the prime uh, contractor. And if you didn't know that, then you'd be non-compliant with that you know, particular FAR criteria. And in the eyes of the government, that's, that's obviously um, a, a negative thing. So that's, that's really something that you have to be aware of. I think there's going to be a lot of other things we can dive into with monitoring subcontracts as well. But if you're just joining us, this is Brian Smith with Risk Reconnaissance. It's a podcast dedicated to government defense contractors, all things being risk, business development, and just really good sound information. And joining me today is Joe Greger from DCAA, and he is the small business liaison. He actually goes out uh, into the field and assists these companies with, uh, how could I put it, seminar-based information sessions. And in fact, we had one here in Atlanta today. But getting back to our topic, we were talking about monitoring subcontracts, and you brought up some really good points. Let's add to that for a moment. And do you have any other aspects you'd like to bring up specifically on what they may want to look for? Absolutely. Another area that I see a lot is in the area of submitting proposals. So a, a large prime contractor might submit a large proposal, let's say $100 million, but they have significant subcontract work within that proposal. Uh, as, a, as a prime contractor, one of your responsibilities would be to assess the subcontractor to determine whether that proposal is fair and reasonable. You know, ultimately, that subcontract proposal is being rolled up into the prime proposal, which the government will make a decision on if they want to award the contract. Part of that decision would be, is has the prime contractor reviewed that proposal uh, to make a determination of whether it's, it's fair and reasonable. So again, I go back to my original point where FAR uh, states you, you're, you're required to monitor your subcontracts, that is another area that's uh, extremely important, and, and all businesses really need to know that. Is it safe to say, Joe, that it's difficult to pick a really good subcontractor for some of these contracts? It, it's extremely difficult. You know, uh, like I said, the regulations can be tough to navigate. Uh, there's really no set rules on what you really should do. Uh, FAR and DFAR, uh, honestly, is, is uh, kind of fuzzy, and, and it's fuzzy uh, for a reason. Uh, because the government doesn't know all, all the variables that might happen. So really, th again, the responsibility falls on that prime contractor uh, to do their due diligence. It's interesting that you're talking about that in this segment, because when I deal with customers and, and uh, future customers, clients, what we find is that it's what they don't know. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but what they don't know about working with subcontractors, um, from a liability perspective, you're picking up the liability of that subcontractor if they're not properly insured. And I know we're not talking about insurance today, but we are talking about exposure or exposures with adequately working with subcontractors and monitoring those subcontracts. So having said that, it's very important that um, if you are working with subcontractors, have a list of requirements that meet or exceed your levels of insurance so that in the event something does happen, your company is not going to be held, held accountable for it. It's going to be the insurance company or the insurance program that that subcontract has or subcontractor has. And those are just a few examples that uh, we've run into as well on the risk management side. But we were talking uh, as well about the other things about monitoring subcontracts and the importance of that. So is there another point you'd like to bring up on that or a, what, what, what would you, how would you like to round that out? I think the only recommendation I have is just, just be familiar with the FAR requirements and understand a lot of the responsibilities um, uh, the government places on you as a prime contractor for determining your, determining your subcontracts. And like I said earlier, I, I'm DCA's focal point in the area of small business, so I'm happy to take calls or emails from, from anybody out there. If you have questions as it relates to uh, FAR and DFARs and its applications, please feel free to, to give me a call or shoot me an email. Why don't you go ahead and give us that contact information, Joe? Again, it's Joe Greger. That's J-O-E-G-R-E-G-E-R -E -E and with the DCAA. So, Joe, what phone number or email address would be great to get a hold of you? Uh, you know, honestly, the best way is, is to check out our website. We have a ton of resources there, uh, www.dcaa.mil. If you go there and click on the Small Business uh, Resource link, my information is there, is there as well as other resources. Uh, but my, my direct email is joseph, J-O-S-E-P-H, dot greger, G-R-E-G-E-R, -E 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 at D-C-A-A -A dot M-I-L. Perfect. 
If you're just joining us, this is Brian Smith with Risk Reconnaissance. It's a podcast dedicated to all things government contracting with regards to risk, business development, and issues that could impact the profitability of your contract. And again, I'm joined by Joe Greger of DCAA, where we're talking about uh, the second part of our discussion today, which happens to be rather important. Uh, Joe, we talked prior to the show, and you made mention of uh, a very important point, and I'm not going to dive into it. So why don't you tell me the biggest issue in your professional opinion that is confronted by companies up to, and it even could exceed this, $250 million. Well, you know, one of the largest things that I see is with small businesses and really any any defense contractor is a lot of times there's just things that they don't know. Uh, I was in an event last week, actually not far from here, and I met a lot of small businesses, and a lot of them, they just didn't have uh, questions to ask because there was a lot of things they, that they just didn't know how to ask. Um, so one of the, one of the things I'd like to talk about is some resources available for small businesses. Uh, obviously, I mentioned our website uh, www.dcaa.mil. A lot of great resources there. But outside of that, I highly recommend uh, small businesses checking out their local PTAC. Uh, that is P A T C. That's the acronym, and it stands for Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Uh, every state has them. In fact, most states have uh, several of them. Uh, within within the state, so I would just recommend going and finding your local PTAC. But your local PTAC can help you uh, in a lot of ways. They can help you understand and establish your business plan. They can help with financing. But on top of that, they can also help with the various requirements as it relates to FAR and DFARS and navigating that space. You know, another area I think would be uh, very helpful for small businesses is looking into the SBA Mentor Protege Program. Uh, it's a program hosted by the SBA. What they do is they match up with a prime contractor, and it's really in that during that relationship that you have with a prime contractor, you can learn quite a bit about government contracting. Um, you know, again, you, you can learn about uh, the financing aspect. You can learn, learn about some of the regulations, um, and, and again, during that relationship, they can help you out in, in determining your your business plan, where you want to go with your business, and also navigating a lot of the FAR and DFARS uh, criteria and regulation. A lot of times I have the opportunity to talk to companies that are just getting started in government contracting and to see the look in their eyes on what they could potentially do is great. And then they start the process. And it's difficult to say the least, right? It really is. Yeah. And so you mentioned PTAC and then the Mentor Protege Program. I think the Mentor Protege Program is more of a building block because you have to first be in the system uh, with some success under your belt. But PTEC, is it too good to be true or is it safe to say that it's free? I mean, is there a cost there? Uh, no, it is absolutely free. Uh, the PTACs actually get most of their funding through DLA, which, as you know, is a DOD agency. Uh, and then the rest of their funding is normally uh, funded through a, a local nonprofit or university. Uh, and in this case, it's the local university here. But but absolutely, PTAC, it's a great resource. It's a great organization. I highly recommend you you checking it out. Uh, and in a lot of cases, PTACs will actually host events uh, where I come by and, and I speak, uh, for example, like the one we did this morning. So, you know, I love coming by. I love speaking at those events. And, and quite honestly, it's, it's, you know, I love just teaching the knowledge that I've gained over these uh, 16, 17 years and, and helping out small businesses. I'm certainly glad you were able to join us today because it's, it's been quite informative. We, we have met uh, over the years many companies that have been part of the mentor protege program that have gone on to bigger and better things. They've, they've done very, very well for themselves, uh, giving great opportunity to, to not only their families, but the people that they're employing. And it's, it's, it's not easy, but it's not impossible. And if you don't take advantage of some of this stuff, like Joe was mentioning before, then, um, you know, it's going to make the, it's going to make the hill a little bit steeper as being a government defense contractor. Joe, is there anything you'd like to add as far as an element that you routinely see? Because government, uh, I'm sorry, audits are not fun, okay? DCAA could probably be, uh, for all intents and purposes, scary. <laughs> um, and with that in mind, one more question. Should they be? No, a absolutely not. You know, it's uh, one of the things that I talk about, too, is, uh, being in this role uh, I'm a facilitator, so I, I take a lot of questions uh, during during audits where a contractor or a small business might be going through an audit with their local DCA office, um, and there are occasions where 
issues arise, challenges arise, and, and they'll give me a call or, or shoot me an email just, just to sort of have a sounding board, somebody to talk to. Um, and, and I like being in that role as a facilitator. I can help out both the small business and, and obviously DCA as well to hopefully complete their audits. But, uh, you know, this is, this is an area, this is a space where small businesses and really any contractor, they don't have to be alone in this area. There, there are a lot of organizations such as yours, uh, Brian, you had mentioned, uh, and also with the PTAX, where we're, we're all in this to help small businesses and contractors be successful. Uh, ultimately, ultimately at, the, at, at the end of the day, the goods and services that they provide goes towards uh, helping and supporting our, our, our warfighter. And that's, our, that's DCA's uh, mission as well. So, you know, again, we're all in this together. I'm here to support and help them any way, um, anywhere I can. And again, our, our website, uh, www.dcaa.mil, or you could email me or call me, and, and I'm happy to help anytime. Joe, that's great information, and I really appreciate you taking the time today to talk to us about the ins and outs of DCA, at least from two perspectives, and I think it was quite informative. And you also mentioned one other thing, and I'm going to close with this, that you are looking to support the warfighter. And I think sometimes in government contracting, when you're dealing with um, uh, commercial entities, they don't understand what you're trying to do, and we support those that support the warfighter. And the association that Joe was bringing up earlier was the National Defense Industrial Association, Georgia chapter, of which I'm the president of that chapter and had the distinct pleasure of having a, uh, the opportunity to talk to these guests and learn a lot on a one-to-one -one basis. And that's really what the intent is here today, is to share that with you so that you don't have to be at the table. You could actually be wherever you are right now listening to this and gaining some valuable information. If you're interested in contacting Risk Reconnaissance, you can go to theriskrecon.com. That's theriskrecon, R-E-C-O-N.com. And you can always reach me direct if you're interested in having a conversation on a one-to-one -one basis at 770-250-0227. Today I was joined by Joe Greger of, D D D of DCAA small business liaison, trainer extraordinaire. And uh, again, I thank him so much for spending some time with us this afternoon. And I look forward to uh, seeing you again in the near term. Closing out, this is Brian Smith with the Risk Reconnaissance Podcast from Atlanta.